Well, Miss Pigot, it's good to see you online. How's that uh, Crestview traffic, traffic treating you? Give it another couple of minutes here just to see if more people log on. Um, Ms. Pigott, I see you went through the uh, accident pretty quickly. Yeah, it was backed up, really backed up. Gotta love Crestview. I know, driving through it every day is rough. <laughs> I come you from Sandestin. Oh my God, you do you work in Sandestin? Yes, sir. Oh gosh. Yeah, I, I used, know. I used to live in that area for for a while. Uh, I miss it, but you couldn't pay me enough to live down there now. There's just too many tourists. Where in Crestview? No, in uh, in the Miramar Beach Sandestin area. Oh yeah, everyday uh, traffic's bad. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I work at a resort, so I see tourists every day. <laughs> bless your heart. Oh, bless <laughs> Sorry, my dogs are fighting. That's okay. You can go on mute. That's good. I'm just going to give it a couple of more minutes. Um, waiting for a couple more people to show up. So while I wait, I'm going to go put some ice in my cup, and I'll be right back. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Many participants do we have? Well, we got 12 only. So it stands to reason I think my Niceville crew um, and Crestview crew, I have high school students, their the football games were moved to tonight um, to prepare for the hurricane. So I don't think many of them will be on tonight, but let me make sure this is recording. Important lecture tonight. Um, we won't go the whole time, but the information I'm gonna to provide to you tonight is gonna to be extremely helpful, uh, especially on essay number two. I'm actually gonna walk you through a demonstration to assist those who are having a little hard time with MLA um, and integrating the, the sources into your paper, which is required for essay number two. Um, I am having quite a few students who are having some difficulty. And so I want to um, walk you through the process of taking that information that you've gathered from your source, uh, your research, okay? All the sources that you gathered during your research and you categorize that information, you pulled out the information that you think is most critical um, the next step is how to integrate that into your essay. So we're going to look over a couple of examples tonight, and then I'll actually demonstrate the process. Um, again, it's, it's very generic um, and very general as far as the process, but depending on your topic and, and your writing style, um, you may be able to pick up on some things to help you. Uh, it will not be the same process for everyone because as we know, a topic can vary from, from subject to subject and your writing style can vary from individual to individual. So uh, even though the technique is the same, the way in you utilize that technique will be unique to yourself. Uh, but we will, we will 
work with what we have and I will show you my technique and how I um, integrate other people's thoughts and ideas into papers that I'm writing um, for myself. Okay. All right. Let me go through the role real quick because I do want to see. Let's make sure that that is taken care of. So I just want to see who's here and who's not because the participants window is not always working inside of Zoom. So I like to call this out, see who's here, who's not. All right, so uh, Mr. Ammon. Uh, I'm here. Okay. Uh, Ms. Baldwin, I know you're here because I saw you log on first. So you get credit for being here first. Uh, Ms. Bernard. <laughs> Brooklyn I'm here. Lamar. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Black. Okay, so she's probably another one that's uh, it's probably a high school student. Uh, Ms. Cisneros. Okay, she'll probably be on a little later. All right, Ms. Irk, I know she's a high school student. Uh, Mr. Marcelino. I think um, I saw you. Um, sir, I, I'm here. Sorry about that. I, I yeah. unmuted at this time. That's okay. Not a problem. I'm back now, sir. Okay. Uh, for those of you who don't know, there is a quick way to uh, unmute, and that is holding down the space bar. Uh, that way you don't have to search for the button. Um, there is a quick way of, of unmuting temporarily. You just hold down the space bar, say what you need to say, and then let go of it. So, okay, uh, sir, learned, that sounds cool. Thanks. Already. Yeah, I just learned that the other night, so <laughs> I oh, figured I'd pass oh. that along to you all. Uh, Miss Floro, I think she might be a high school student as well. Really wish they would give me a indication in this roster who is and who's not miss olivia gonzalez i think i saw you log on yeah i'm here yeah i'm here okay yeah. <laughs> uh miss samantha gonzalez miss samantha yeah okay so she's probably one too uh miss ashlyn hill i'm here okay thank you uh miss courtney hill i'm here all right, Miss Holland. No, Miss Holland. Okay, uh, Miss Hun. I'm here. Awesome, uh, Miss Lay. I'm here. Awesome, uh, Miss Logan. All right, I have to get on to Miss Logan. She's one of my prior students. Um, come on, where are you at, Miss Logan? Miss Marinin. Ms. Susan Marinan, okay. Uh, Mr. Murphy. No, Mr. Murphy, okay. Ms. Pigott, you're here, battling your dogs, I'm sure. Um, Mr. Schaefer. Nope, don't see that. Mr. Topple, yeah, I know he's a high school student. And Mr. Zamorski. Here. Awesome. Okay. All right, y'all. Like I said, we've got a lot to talk about tonight. So I want to go ahead and get started. Let me get this participants um, thing out of the way. <clears throat> now, the first question I have is for, um, especially for this class, because uh, quite a few people have requested the video uh, uh, from these nightly lectures and uh, I've, I've tried to link them because the reason why I've sent you all links to the videos is because uh, it's so for an hour and a half to two hours, sometimes two hours and a half. It takes a long time for me to download those videos and then re-upload them to YouTube or to Blackboard. So what I wanted to do was to start off the process of just sending you the link um and i just wanted to know is that sufficient for those of you who are wanting 
the video uh, to watch it back on the next day is me providing a link. Is that sufficient for you? Um, sir? Yes, sir. What do you mean by videos? What are you saying? Okay, so the video for this, uh, this lecture tonight, every time we meet, um, the, the Zoom server makes a recording of this lecture and uh, after a few hours, it makes it available to me. And what I end up doing is sending out a link uh, via email to the class to let you all access that video and, and watch it again, just in case you missed something from the Thursday night class. Uh, okay. I had several people request that feature. So I just want to make sure if that, if my sending the link to you is working, um, and if it's not, let me know so I can come up with an alternative way of getting you the content uh, after it's recorded on Thursday nights. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Ms. Baldwin, I think you were one that requested it. Is, is, are you able to get to the videos? Uh, oh. Oh, you're not? No. I didn't uh, get it. Okay. So what I will do is uh, I will do my best to download them then. Um, and we'll just go from there. Uh, like I said, these things are very lengthy. I, I wish they had a straight to YouTube feature. Um, but I'll do my best to download the videos from the past two to three weeks and post them into YouTube for you, OK? okay. Thank you. Yes, I sir. got another question to ask you. How long uh -huh. is this, the Zoom session going to be? Uh, it won't be all night tonight. I can tell you that, but I'm, I'm not exactly sure. It's just how quickly we can get through the content. We'll do the best we can. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to because I am recording, I'm going to mute. Yeah, ask everybody to mute you. Ah, thank you. Yeah, because I was getting a little bit of feedback. All right. Um, all right. Let me bring up my. <clears throat> let me bring up my blackboard here, and I'm going to talk a few th about a few things inside a blackboard that um, you all may have questions about. Okay, and I'm going to bring up the student preview real quick. And as you know, or if you, those of you who've been checking your email, uh, essay number one has been graded and posted. Okay, now uh, I am, I, I do have some students, especially in the day classes. I'm sure there are some people in the night classes. Yes, sir. Um, sir, I just want to say that I've seen you. Uh, Graded my first essay for reasons why. Thank you very much, kind sir. You're you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. I'm hoping to get an a next time though, but thanks. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um. So. Hundred though next time, but thanks. Uh, you're welcome. But thanks. Um. So, okay, where was I? For reasons, okay, for the first essay, uh, I have had some issues with some students not understanding how the feedback process works uh, and not understanding how to get to that feedback. So I'm gonna show you this process real quick. Before I do that, I do want to let you all know that there is a feature that I was unaware of uh, inside of Blackboard. Um, and if you if you are onto this, give me a thumbs up if you, if you know it works well, if it's one that, that you're using right now. But Blackboard does have an app. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you gave me the thumbs up before I even asked. <laughs> Y'all are so funny. I love it. I love it. Y'all are cool. Um, so yeah, Blackboard does have an app that's available in the iOS, Apple iOS store and the Google Play store for Android phones. Um, I do have some students that have, that have used Blackboard in the past. They utilize that app. And they tell me as soon as I give you feedback, um, 
or as soon as I've given them feedback on their assignments, they immediately get a notification in their phone. Okay, I, uh, iPhone and Android. So if you're, if you're one of those really proactive, you want to be on the ball all the time, you want to know immediately when you have feedback um, on an essay or if there's a new assignment posted or whatnot, anything to do with our Blackboard shell. Uh, definitely download that app and connect it to your student account and that will give you a little notification on your phone whenever there's new content available or new feedback available. Okay, so I just wanted to throw that out there for those of you who are unaware. All right, so uh, essay number one reasons why. Again, I'm showing the student preview here because I want to make sure that I don't um, I do not reveal people's grades because I get in a lot of trouble for doing that. So that's why I put it in the student preview mode. Also, this is a shell that you all see. All right. So as you can see here, I've got the reasons why I click the link and I come into the Dropbox and I see that, OK, I have a grade for my assignment. And this is where a lot of people are getting stuck because obviously they're using the iOS or Android phone in the browser to access Blackboard. And when you do that, depending on the size of your screen, you may or may not see this box right here, or you may only see the, the grade bubble, okay? So that's why I've encouraged each and every student, unless you're utilizing the app in iPhone or Android, access this website from a laptop or a tablet and preferably a tablet that it has a widescreen um, function on it okay because this website is programmed using a responsive type format and it will change the order of the content and the boxes based on the device that you're using and if you're utilizing a phone this small and you're bringing up Blackboard in the browser, you may or may not see some content because of the, the rules and the code that it's using to display the content in the background, okay? So again, if you're wanting to see Blackboard on your phone, use the app, all right? Um, if you're wanting, you don't wanna install an app, you want to use the website, that's fine. Use a laptop or a tablet, okay? When you do that, you will see this uh, grading full box pop up. So again, you're going to see the grade that you get and it is color coded. A lot of people end up getting anxiety when they don't see the color that they are wanting. Um, but you know, that's the system that they use. Now, in addition to the grade, you're going to want to see the feedback that I give you because it's extremely important to understand. I have two methods to give you feedback and you need to understand the difference between the two, okay? So to get to that feedback, you're gonna click your grade, okay? Just that little link right there. You put your cursor over it, it becomes a link. Click it, okay? All right, so some people have gotten this far and what they do is immediately scroll to the bottom to where their paper is and they view their document and go, Mr. Davis, you didn't even grade my paper. You didn't even read my paper. Yes, I did. This Dropbox is showing you the original document that you submitted, okay? In other words, this is what you submitted on the night it was due. This is not the graded version. There's two different versions, okay? So this is the document that you uploaded in order to get that paper to me. So that's the original document. If you want to see the one that I graded, you need to stay at the top, okay? right up here in this bar. And again, when you shrink this, you may or may not see it. That's why you want the wide, the wide screen. You see the final grade and the date that it was submitted. You see what your score is. And then you see this little comment bubble off to the side, okay? That is an indication that I have made comments and given you feedback on your paper, okay? So what you want to do is you want to click that box and that brings up another window that offers all of the feedback that I have for your assignment, okay? And that's going to come in the form of a PDF, a separate PDF that I reattach to your Dropbox. 
You can only get that PDF from the feedback, okay? Not here, not in the original document down here, but up here, this feedback button, okay? So when you click that, you're going to see a bunch of red markings all over your, your paper, okay? It's going to happen. Don't freak out. It's normal, all right? Um, so let me, let me explain to you what is going on here. Number one, you're going to see feedback in the form of what we call tracking changes inside of Microsoft Word, okay? How many people out there, give me a thumbs up or wave your hand if you've ever used tracking changes before in Microsoft Word? Okay, uh, that's pretty telling. So uh, oh, I got one. What is tracking changes in Microsoft Word? What's that? Okay, I, so you're one that hasn't seen it either. So what I'll do is I'll show it to you very quickly. Okay. It was that there was a thumbs down. Oh, that was supposed to be a thumbs down. Okay. Um, all right. So I will let me, huh? Uh, sorry about that, sir. I didn't know I was supposed to give a thumbs down. That's okay. That's all right. Okay. So this is, let me get out of here. Let me go into a Microsoft Word document. All right, so I'm going to bring up the essay template here. Okay, remember this? This is the one we created a couple of weeks ago. There was a template for your paper. All right, so whenever you submit your document, I download them to my computer and I start doing the proofing. All right, so the first thing that I'm looking for is format. Okay, and what do I mean by format? How does the essay look? Are you using the MLA headers appropriately? Do you have your um, document up here listed with the appropriate page number and your last name? Does your essay have a title? Is it formatted in according to the construction of an essay? Okay, if you're using MLA, does it look like an MLA paper? In addition to that, uh, I am looking through the paper for grammatical mistakes. I'm looking for spelling errors and capitalization errors and other mechanics. Okay. So when I find that you, you have those types of errors, I will come in here and I'll click on tracking changes. Okay. And that's a feature that you see right up here under uh, when you start up the document. Instead of clicking home, you scroll over and click review. And then you click this button here that says tracking changes. What that does is it takes your original essay and makes it a version, okay, version one. When I turn that on, I'm creating a second version, version two. And this version allows me to come into your paper and say, no, 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 the introduction to my paper states the following theory, okay? I'm just making up something. So as you can see, can you see what it did there? It has the original words that you, you can't see this on the screen? No, sir, I'm sorry, I can't. No. I, believe you're sorry to, I believe you're still sorry to essay number one reasons why. I'm sorry, sir, I can't see what you're saying. Okay, hold on just a second. Does anybody else see the uh, Microsoft document? No. Okay. That's it. Okay. Let me reshare. Let me exit out of here. Gosh, Zoom. I absolutely hate Zoom. Stop the screen share. I actually have to do this manually. This is crazy. All right. Let me bring up the SA template. One second, it's not working with me. All right. Okay, here we go, finally. Share, template. Okay, now can you see my template? Yes, sir, I can, thank okay. you. Okay, all right, good. So 
this is what happens when I, when I download your paper, I save it onto my hard drive and I open it up. Okay. And I just want you to pretend for a second that this is your paper. All right. So again, what I'm looking for on, I'm looking for two different things here. The first thing that I'm looking at is the format of your paper, the structure of your paper, the mechanics of your paper, capitalization, punctuation errors, and um, spelling errors, other, other mechanical problems as well. Okay. So what I do is I always turn on, I go here up to the top and I click review and I make sure that tracking changes is turned on. Okay, so again, as I was telling you a while ago, and you couldn't see what tracking changes does is it takes your version of the document and makes it version 1.0, the very first version. And then it creates a second version for me to make recommendations and to make edits and stuff. So, uh, for example, we're just we're just pretending here. Let's say that I'm looking through this and I go, all right, so first of all, he didn't start off the sentence with an article. It needs an article here. So I'm going to type in the article, correct the word, and I'm going to suggest some more text here. So the introduction to my paper proposes the following theory. Okay, so as you can see there, I have the original text that you have in black. And in addition to that, there is text in red that is that are suggestions for improvement, corrections to spelling, capitalization, and uh, punctuation errors outlined in red, okay? So anytime you see a digital version of a correction using this lingo, all right, that is an indication to you that I am correcting the format of your paper. All right, one sec, somebody's got a question here. Uh, yeah, okay, yep, no worries. <sighs> yeah, and I will, I will address the MLA quiz tonight. It, it'll, it's gonna set a lot of minds at ease. All right, so as you can see in the document, and I can even look at this, I can come up here and look at original. All right, you see, there's the original document. That was the very first version. And I can come back up here and click this button again. And this is going to show me the simple markup. Now, this is going to show me what the paper looks like with my recommendations added to it. All right, but showing all markup, this is basically how it's going to look when you download my feedback. Okay, it's going to show you what you originally wrote and it's going to show the changes that I recommend to improving that essay. Okay, and again, all of these digital versions, right? This is just digital text. That is recommendations that I'm making for the format of the of the paper. Okay. Um, sir. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, how how long how many questions will the MLA quiz have, and how okay. long will it be? Uh, I will get to that in just a second. Let me get through this portion first. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I have edits on your document showing format errors that I want you to correct. The other thing that you're going to see is what is red hand drawn notes. Okay. And you'll see that like this, please use active voice, not passive. Okay. Something of this nature. So if you see hand drawn notes on your essay, that is feedback that I'm giving you about the content of your paper, okay? Or please use more sources for your next essay, okay? All right, so, yes. You are not sharing the screen. It's not sharing? Oh. No. Goodness gracious, this Zoom is just kicking my rear end tonight. All right, let's try this. Okay, do you see that? Yes. Okay, all right. So as you can see here, I've got two different forms of, of feedback here. I've got the what's in digital form in the, in the text that was typed on the screen, but also have hand-drawn, 
all right? Hand-drawn feedback. Anything you see that's using my handwriting is in regards to your content, okay? So between these two, you're gonna get a full review of what I think about your essay and things that I think you need to work on and improve for the next essay, okay? So for those of you who downloaded the feedback, if you saw a lot of hand-drawn notes, uh, those are things that I really, really, really want you to um, correct and learn about in your own time. You know, do some research, do some reading, look at examples of things that you need to do to improve whatever that uh, item that I've called out is. If you need some assistance from me, please let me know and I'll help you with that. All right. Um, so, <clears throat> Like I said, if you see a lot of hand-drawn notes in there on your paper, then you know you got some things to work on. If you did not see a lot of hand-drawn notes, don't get a big don't don't get a big ego. Okay, it just means that I thought you did very well for a first essay. Doesn't mean you don't have things to improve upon and to get better at. Um, again, just because you got an A on the first essay doesn't mean you're going to necessarily get an A on essay number three or four. Okay each one of these essays are going to get progressively harder. So anyway, in a nutshell, what I want you to do is to download the feedback that I have provided to you in a PDF format. Especially pay attention to the hand-drawn notes that I've made on your essay. Write them down and put them in a notepad because what I've done for each one of you is I've made a journal, okay? I made a journal with all of your names in there and I've, I've copied these notes in there. And so I made observations of things that I want you to work on and improve. And if I don't see the improvement over essay two, three, and four, you're going to get penalized more harshly for that. Okay. So number one, make a note of what the feedback is and then look that information up in your textbook. If you can't find information to help you improve upon that, then email me and let me know and I will, I will do my best to tutor you to get caught up, okay? So, in other words, the hand-drawn notes are more and more important to me than the digital edits that I'm making in the, in the essay, okay? The digital stuff that you see in Tracking Changes, that's run-of-the-mill edit stuff that most, these are common mistakes that everybody's going to make whenever they're writing. Even I make these mistakes, okay? Any professor who tells you they don't make mistakes like this, they're lying, okay? Or they just don't read their own damn work. Everybody makes these common errors, but it's the stuff that I really want you to focus on is the stuff that I'm writing with my own handwriting, okay? Write that information down. If you don't understand what I'm trying to say, email me. I will explain it and help you, okay? The goal of this class is to make you a better writer. And the, the advice that I'm giving to you in hand-drawn notes are going to make you a better writer, period. I guarantee it, okay? So take the advice that I'm giving to you seriously, learn from it, and grow as a writer, okay? All right, so at that point, I'm going to pause for questions about the type of feedback that I offer you in the form of digital edits and hand-drawn notes and how you find that feedback in Blackboard. Does anybody have any questions? All right, everybody good? All right, let me stop sharing my screen. Close that out. All right, let me come back into Blackboard. And let's talk about a couple of more things here. Everybody see that now? Is Zoom working correctly? Okay. All right. So let me go back into English Comp 1. Now, there are a few things that you're going to have to be mindful of. And then, and what I'm seeing is there's several students who are forgetting assignments. Um, not forgetting the major ones, but I'm telling you, do not forget these minor ones because these are added points that are going to help you out at the end of the semester. I guarantee you can make the difference between getting a C in this class versus, I mean, getting a B versus a C or an A versus a B. 
do not overlook the minor assignments in the form of reading responses, discussion boards, and quizzes. Now, the quiz, I'm going to link the quiz. I finally got it drafted. I've had time enough to get that drafted this week, and I'm going to post it here pretty soon. You're going to see it fire in, in one of these random quizzes. It's an MLA style quiz where I ask you to use your textbook to answer a series of questions about MLA. There are no trick questions. And in fact, I kind of point to you where you need to go into the textbook to find the answer. Therefore, there's no reason why no one should score below a perfect 100 on this quiz. At the same time, quizzes for me are not that big of a deal. Uh, so when I link it, it's really up to you. Yeah, of course, you didn't see it last weekend because my wife had a lot of big things for me to do last weekend. I just, it was, I don't even want to go there, but last weekend was absolutely crazy. Um, so here's the way quizzes work in my classroom. When I post a quiz, you have until the end of the semester to complete the quiz. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be, I'm not in the, I'm not in the frame of mind where I'm going to track down and see who has completed the quiz by a certain date. Quizzes are there for your benefit to kind of reinforce some concepts. Now I encourage you to complete the quizzes as soon as I post them because fresh in the mind means better performance on the quiz. But if you're the type where you're just going to blow it off until the last day, you can blow it off till the last day. And if that works for you, and you'll get, still get all of the points that you, you scored, okay? And that's only for quizzes. Quizzes I give you till the end of the semester to complete, okay? It's my gift to you. All right. Uh, yes, sir. Um, sir, so let me get one thing straight. We have to use our textbooks to take the MLA format quiz? Yes. Okay. And second, when is the quiz due? By the end of the semester. I'm, no. Okay. All right. Yeah. By the end of the sure. semester. When will, be, when will the uh, quiz be due? By the end of the semester. I'll, the, the, end, the last day of the semester will be the due date on the quiz. Okay. Sorry okay. about that. That's okay. Yeah. You don't recall seeing it because I haven't posted it yet. My apologies. It was, it, I had every intentions of posting it, but other things came up. All right. So, um, all right, where was I? Okay, hold on, uh, another. I am confused. Okay, Miss Pygott, come on, come online and you can come on, on, there you go, and unmute. So tell me what you're confused about. I wanna make sure that we are on the same page. I was just confused how people even knew there was an MLA quiz. Because I told people in an S in a in an email stupidly that uh, there was going to be a quiz and I should not have done that. <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> well, that just proves that I don't read my email. <laughs> Ooh, you just outed yourself. I nice. I didn't do it on purpose. I really didn't. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. I love this class. Thank but you. I will. I will keep an eye on them. <laughs> Thank you for straightening that up for me. You're very welcome. <laughs> okay, so let me go back. Now, I want to bring your attention to essay number two. Okay, because I'm going to show you how to do essay number two very, very easily and very quickly. Essay number two is due on the 18th of um, October, all right? This assignment is the same length paper as essay number one, okay? 650 words, two and a half pages. Very, very easy to knock out very quickly, okay? The only difference is between essay number one and essay number two, is the inclusion of outside sources for your, for your paper, okay? That's the only difference. You're gonna write on a topic of your choosing and you're gonna write it 
what in a way that we call a literacy narrative. I'll explain that here in a few minutes, what literacy narratives are. And you're going to do a little research on the library's database website and find a couple of sources that kind of back up what you're wanting to say in your paper. Okay. Very easy and very straightforward. Now, again, this essay is a demonstration of your knowledge of MLA. It may not be perfect and that's okay. Again, this is a learning opportunity. We're really using essay number one and essay number two as a learning opportunity to get to essay number three and four, which will be a little more difficult. Okay. So that's why the points are not as severe for essay number one and essay number two. Okay. So let me open up. Well, actually, here's the literacy the the requirement document right here is as follows. Again, just like essay number one, you want to avoid the easy, fast answers. Don't bother writing about the obvious. Avoid the standard five paragraph essay because that pattern is limiting and make sure that you proofread your paper for errors in grammar and mechanics. OK, again, all of the digital uh, review stuff that I showed you earlier. Make sure that your spelling is uh, correct. Make sure your capitalization and your punctuation. Now, side note on that aspect. A thing that can really, really help you all if you will do this is go to a website called Grammarly.com. Grammarly.com is a feature that you can add to Word that will actually give you recommendations on spelling, punctuation, and grammar. It's absolutely free. Okay. I encourage my students to use that because the way that Grammarly presents those corrections, it's actually a learning opportunity. It shows you what you wrote and why it's incorrect and the recommendation to make it correct in that is a learning experience. Okay. That's why I don't think Grammarly.com is a cheat tool like some of my colleagues do because of the way that the corrections are presented to the students or to the user. Okay. So for those of you who want to really, you know, you're a perfectionist, you want to make sure that your spelling, punctuation, and capitalization is correct, use this website called Grammarly.com. Okay. It can be really beneficial to you. All right. So, as stated here in the requirements document, this, again, this essay is very similar to essay number one. It's a personal essay, okay? So you're gonna write about a topic that's personal to you. My hope is that you choose a different topic or a different activity, but if you're just one of those one trick ponies and you like what you like and you don't wanna consider anything else, okay, that's fine. You can write about the same topic again don't submit the same essay that you <laughs> wrote, write a different essay for it because you're going to have to have two outside sources to back up some of the things that you're saying about the topic. Okay. All right. So again, in your textbook on page 88, there is a list of topics there that you can choose from. They're very similar in scope and in content to essay number one. Okay. But again, this, this is a still a personal type essay that has some academic qualities to it because you're bringing in outside material, okay? All right, so how is it different from essay number one? Well, in this one, you're gonna start off by telling a story, okay? That's the difference. So a literacy narrative is as follows. It is it's an informative type essay Okay, that is written in a way that you can entertain and educate at the same time. Okay, so you're educating or you're entertaining and educating your reader on a specific topic. Now, the reason why I put entertaining first is because you want to grab the reader's attention. So you're going to start off your essay writing about this topic by telling someone a story about the topic. So let me give you an example. If I was writing this essay, of course, I would write it about football because I played football in high school. So I've got plenty of stories that I can tell. 
about the time that I played football back in high school, but there's one that really stands out in my mind and it's the one Okay, somebody's having internet connectivity issues. Okay, uh, again, for those of you who are having internet connectivity issues, this lecture is being recorded. So if you're missing something, don't worry. I'm gonna give you the link to, so you can watch the video back, all right? Not a big deal. All right, so back to the literacy narrative. If I was writing this topic, or writing a paper for this topic, I would, again, I would write it on football because I'm gonna tell a story, okay? I've got many stories that I can tell, but there's one that stands out in my mind, it's this. It's the time that I got hurt playing ball, okay? It was my junior year, and I was running a post route. We were within 10, 15 yards of the red zone. I was running a post route in order to get us there, and I went on a post route, and my quarterback, who was my best friend in high school, threw the ball too high, I went up, jumped to catch the ball. I did. I caught the ball, came down with it. Unfortunately, I came down with two more things at the same time, which was a free safety and a strong safety. One was on my back and one was trying to rip the ball out of my hands at the same time. When we all came down, my ankle turned and it turned in a severe way that I could not walk for the next six to eight weeks. Pretty much ended my football career. Okay. Not that it was a much of one anyway, but it was still personal to me. I enjoyed the time that I played. But here's the reason why that story stuck out in my mind. It's because I see athletes now in this day and age who are able to still play the game with more severe injuries than the one that I suffered because of the advancement in orthopedics. Okay that the the advances in medical technology have come a long way in the past 20 25 years actually it's been almost 30 years since i played okay so injuries like mine back then could absolutely knock you out where you could never play again whereas today because of medical technology you can get an athlete back on the field okay so if i were writing a literacy narrative i would and it being a two part essay one to entertain and the other to educate. I would lead off the essay with my story about when I played and I got hurt and, and really expand upon the details of what happened to me when I got injured. And then I would lead into uh, a discussion about all of the advances in orthopedics and medical technology that can help athletes get back on the field, okay? You see what I did there? I took a story and merged it right into a topic that relates back to my story. Now, because this essay requires two sources, I want to have to go to the library's database and pull two sources that talk about advances in orthopedics and medical technology to back up some of the things that I want to talk about in my essay. Okay. That in a nutshell is a literacy narrative. Now let me bring up Microsoft Word here, or actually I don't need Microsoft Word. I can bring up whiteboard inside of, let me see how to do that again. I did it the other night. Um, do, 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 do. Let me stop share here. I'm going to share a screen. I'm going to do a whiteboard. Okay, here we go. All right. So I'm thinking about an outline for the paper. All right. Let's see if I'm going to put some text up here on the screen. Here we go. Outline for my literacy narrative. Okay, here we go. So, of course, I'm going to have the, the standard outline format. This is going to be my introduction. Okay. Two. And three, both of these are going to be my story, my narrative. Narrative, part one, and then flowing into a narrative, part two. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is I'm, I've introduced the topic. And I give you a little story of why that's important. 
okay, or a little background, what we call exposition. And now I want to roll it into a discussion where I can educate you or inform you about a topic in relation to my narrative, okay? So up here is my narrative, part one about football injury. Okay, that's my story. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is do the informative part. Now, the informative part will include outside sources or outside source data about advancements in medical technology and sports medicine. Okay. And I'll probably use a couple of more paragraphs to do that. All right. So there's part one and here's part two. And then this, the last part here is the conclusion. Okay. So right there, I've created an outline that sets up my literacy narrative. I introduce the topic. I go straight into my story. And then after I finish my story, I go straight into the informative part of my essay and talk about a specific topic in relation to my story, which happens to be because I was injured playing football, I wasn't able to play again because the, we, we just didn't lack the advancements that we have now in sports medicine and orthopedics. Okay, so there's a transition from my narrative straight into the educational part of my narrative or my story or my essay, sorry, okay? And within this informative section, I'm going to include outside source data to kind of back up some of the points that I'm wanting to make about the narrative, okay? So you see what I did there? I'm basically building on what I did in essay number, number one and making it a little more entertaining by including a narrative. And the other thing that I'm doing, I'm increasing the integrity of the essay by including outside perspectives to back up my own perspective, okay? Essay number one was very, very personal. It was only your perception. Essay number two is gonna be mainly about your perception, but you're gonna include outside sources to back that up, okay? Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if everybody understands what I'm talking about here. Makes sense. Okay. All right. Good deal. So that's what I'm looking for in essay number two. A literacy narrative that gives me a story and educates me at the same time about the topic using outside source information to back up what you're wanting to say. Okay. Any questions about essay number two? Because I know it's coming up quick, but remember it's short. It's two and a half pages. You're not gonna have to write, do a lot of research to prepare for this topic. Just bring in a couple of sources, okay? All right, any questions? Oh, Ms. Baldwin, you froze them. It looked like you were about to ask a question. I'll give you a second to reconnect. Oh, you're good. Yes, ma'am. Um, can we can we use the same uh, topic we use for uh, one? <laughs> <laughs> you asked that like so innocently. Uh, I I would in, I would. <laughs> I would encourage you to think of a different topic. However, no, um, if you have an excellent story that you can tell about that topic that you use in essay number one, okay? If you have a great story, an entertaining story that you, <laughs> Mr. Marcelino, you froze as well. You there? Okay. These internet connections are freezing up. Um, okay. So back to you, Ms. Baldwin. If you have uh, an entertaining story to tell about the topic you used in number one um, 
and you can do some research about that topic and, and bring me some outside sources in your paper, then absolutely you can write about that topic again. Okay. This, this, this exercise is more of a demonstration of, do you understand the research process and how to integrate the information that you learned in that research process into your paper to back up what you want to talk about? That's the, mo that's the focal point. All right. Okay. And I did have a request tonight uh, from a few students. Can you show me how I integrate outside source material that I found in my research into a paper? Yes, I can show you that. It's very, very simple. Okay. Easy process to complete. All right. Any other questions about essay number two? Please, please, please do not hesitate to ask me questions even after tonight. Um, these are major assignments. Number one, I don't want you to miss submitting an assignment for them. But also, more importantly, if you are having, if you don't understand something, I want you to speak up. Let me know one-on-one -on -one through the email so I can help you. Unfortunately, we're not in a classroom where I could pick up on this easier. Uh, this is mainly an online course, so I want to make sure that if you're having trouble that I'm there to help you because that, after all, that is my job to help you become a better writer by understanding these techniques, okay? I take that very, very seriously. Okay, any other questions? All right, again, that was essay number two. Now, let me look through here. I don't think we have another reading response due for a while. We just had reading response number two. Okay, so the next one doesn't come until November 1st. I want, I will not address that one until next week because I really want to get back to the topic at hand tonight. All right, so any other questions, anything else I need to talk about before we move on? Because the next thing I want to talk about is, is the last step, okay? That last step in that PowerPoint that I talked to you all about the uh, last week, which was integrating the, the information that you learn about in your research process. You've made the notes, right? Okay, so you've got all your sources laid out. You've got some information highlighted that you want to use from those sources. You've organized them using note cards and you put them into categories. Now, how do you take that information and use it into a paper using MLA? Well, I'm gonna show you a technique here. Again, I, this example is not gonna work for everybody because I, number one, I don't, I don't know what topic you're gonna to write about. Um, and everybody's style is different, okay? And you're really not gonna understand how to do it until you practice, okay? I can show you how I do it, but until you get in the habit of doing this yourself, you're not really gonna fully understand how it works, okay? So that's why we're using essay number two as a, as a learning tool so that you can try your hand at it formally, and then I can give you some feedback, things you need to really work on in order to nail it in number three, okay? All right, so, let me share my screen here. Before I do, let me hide any kind of um, PII because I don't want to, that's a big no-no. Don't want to uh, leak anybody's personal information here. Okay, so now I'm at the library site. So I'm gonna show you really quickly how to take information from a source, okay? Now, we're gonna pretend for a second that I'm writing a paper about the Greek goddess Athena. I know I keep coming back to that, but she out of the whole pantheon of cultural gods and goddesses that I've studied over the course of my career, Athena by far is the most fascinating to me. Uh, not only because of her origin story, but because of the uniqueness of her character. Um, but anyway, that's a lecture for the mythology series that I'm trying to get the school to 
add to the curriculum. Anyway, so let's pretend for a second that I'm going to write a paper about the Greek goddess Athena. Now, of course, I'm going to write about what I know about Athena, which happens to be a lot. But in order to write an academic paper and, and maintain a validity and integrity, I have to bring in colleagues or I have to bring in the opinions of other academics to back up what I'm saying. Okay. The world uh, is not going to accept a singular point of view when it comes to literary, the science and scientific um, and the arts analysis process. You, you, the more diversity of thought that you have to back up a theory, the more accepted or more likely it will be accepted by an academic committee okay, or a community. So the more sources you have to back up what you're trying to say, the better. All right. So I have a topic in mind. I want to write about the Greek goddess Athena. Now I have to do a little research. Let me see what else other people have said about this topic. Okay. And I'm going to go to the library's databases. And of course, being a lit guy, I'm going to click on the subject because I'm going to single out literature because that's where I'm going to find information about Athena is in the subject literature. I'm going to use a database to do that. All right. Now, as you can see, I've already did a little homework on it, but let's say that I want to, again, I'm going to do some research about the goddess Athena and I'm going to put that into the search term and I'm going to make sure it's a full text because if it's not full text, it's no good to me. All right. So you want to use full text. I'm going to do a little searching here now. Again, you're going to find a bunch of links in here to a bunch of documents that are going to have a ton of source material. Okay. Depending on your topic, some of the sources may be relevant. Some of them may be not. Okay. The only way you're going to find out the relevancy is to read excerpts from them. All right. You just skim through the text to see, can you use the information or does it have nothing to do with my topic? If it has nothing to do with your topic, throw it away, move on to the next one. Okay. So we're going to pretend for a second that I have found an excellent one, which I did a while ago and it was on page two and it was called Odysseus against the matriarchy. In other words, Odysseus had a problem with women, which he did. He had a, he was very misogynistic, did not respect women at all, especially goddesses, which is one of the reasons why, um, most of the goddesses allied against him with the exception of Athena. Okay. Athena had a soft spot for Odysseus for some reason, probably because she didn't, she wasn't the typical woman or typical goddess during this time. But anyway, so I'm reading through this source and I come to a point to where I find some information right here. That's ah, I love this. Okay. This is exactly what I want to use in the body of my essay. So I'm going to copy and paste it into a note, right? I want to take that information, put it into a note. Oh, uh, where's my notepad? There's a notepad. I'm gonna pop that information right here. That is some information that I want to use. Now again, I want to make sure I've got the citation. So I go up there and I click the, the cite button and copy and paste this citation along with the note because I want to make sure that I give proper credit to the uh, author that wrote these words. Okay. All right. So here's a, here's a selection that I have. Can you guys see the notepad? You may not. Uh, I don't see it. Okay, one second. Stop sharing, come back here, go to the notepad. And as you can see right here, there's my notepad. I've taken some notes out of that text that I really want to use for my paper. And I made a little indication here of the source where I got that information from, okay? I, what I usually do is I put a little line in here to separate it from another source. Okay. Just to keep everything organized. Again, your process is your own process. Whatever works for you to organize content, 
do that, okay? All right, so I've got a little note from a source here. I want to use this information in an essay that I want to write. How do I do that? All right, let me stop sharing my screen real quick. I'm gonna bring up Microsoft Word. Now, again, I'm just writing this on the fly. It's probably not gonna make any sense, but that's okay. That's not the point. That's not the point of this exercise. The point of this exercise to sh show you how you use outside source material to reinforce what you want to say, okay? So again, I'm gonna pretend here that I'm writing about the Greek goddess Athena. So uh, in my opinion, Athena, let me correct this before I see it. Athena was one of the most powerful female goddesses in the Greek pantheon. Okay. Now, that's a statement that I've made. That's a theory that I've made, right? Okay. That's that's a subtopic that I'm that I've added to it. One of the things Athena did, blah 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 blah. Okay, um, she turned a mortal into a spider. Okay, which demonstrated her godly powers. So that's common knowledge that I am bringing to the to the table. Now let me look back at this note. And there is some information that Mr. Holland wrote about, or Howland, that I want to use in there to back up what I just said, okay? So how do I do that? Well, immediately after my words, I'm gonna say, according to Mr. Howland, Athena was the epitome of, and I'm going to look back at my note and make sure I get this right, of an eponymous hero, okay? Now, again, the content doesn't matter because I'm just demonstrating an example here. Whilst hunting a mortal man in the forest, okay? So, right here, this sentence right here clearly came from another person. I even indicated that right here in the, in the section. According to Mr. Holland, I'm indicating to the reader that this is information that's coming from another source, not from me, okay? And I'm rewriting what this Mr. Holland said in my own words, okay? Even though it's in my own words, the idea came from Mr. Holland. So I want to make sure that I give Mr. Holland credit. So the way I do that is looking at the type of source that it is, all right? I'm going to put a parenthetical citation here, two parentheses, and I'm gonna write in Mr. Howland's name and I'm just going to indicate to the reader from that source what page that information came from, okay? Now, the page may not be known, and if the page is not known, then you will just put the paragraph number that it came from at the same time, all right, in its place. But again, right here in, this, in the beginning of this paragraph, I start the paragraph off correctly by indenting. In my opinion, Athena was one of the most powerful female goddesses in the Greek pantheon. One of the things Athena did, blah, 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 blah was turn a mortal into a spider. Those are, those are my words, okay? I'm setting the reader up to demonstrate the subtopic that I'm talking about. But at the same time, I wanna transition into information that I've read from another source and I want to present that to back up what I'm saying. So 
I transitioned by saying, according to Mr. Howland, Athena was the epitome of an eponymous hero whilst hunting a mortal man in the forest. Bam, that is a clear shift from what you were saying to what the source is saying, okay? As soon as you finish with that information, you must give credit to the author at that point using an in-text citation in the body of the paragraph, okay? Now, at this point, I want to pause for questions because I want to make sure everybody understood what I just did there, okay? And I'm going to highlight it right here. In, in yellow, that's my words. In green, these are my words, but the ideas came from someone else, okay? They came from another, well, I'm, I'm not going to leave that green because that's hard to see. So let me take that highlighter off and let me make it this color, okay? So what is, what is in highlighted in yellow there is my words. What's highlighted there in teal or whatever cyan color that is, that's clearly showing you the words that are the, the information that came from another writer, okay? I'm just using, I'm borrowing their information to back up what I want to say in my essay, all right? So again, having seen that, let me pause for questions because I want to make sure that everybody understands what I just did there, okay? All right, so I take your silences that you understand, all right? Now, that's not the only thing I have to do with this source. Remember, I did copy the actual citation from the database, which is this information right here. Oh. This information right, where did it go? Right here, okay. So this is the information that, this is the citation that shows the reader where you got that information from, okay? Do not leave this off because on the last page of your essay, you must have what's called a works cited page, okay? Works cited. And that entry needs to be listed in this works cited page. Okay. Now, let me format it correctly because this is supposed to be here and this is supposed to be here. All right. So format it just like that. All right. And you're going to repeat this process for every source that you discovered in your research that's pertinent to the essay that you're wanting to write, okay? Every time you call out information from a source within a paper, you want to immediately put the citation in that, in the body of that paragraph or immediately after that sentence to make sure that you give that person credit for what you borrowed, okay? Do not forget that because if you forget that, that's called plagiarism. You're trying to pass off someone else's ideas as your own, all right? So, again, let me ask real quick, does everybody understand what I did there? Give me a thumbs up if you understand the process that I just demonstrated for you. Um, actually, sir, here, here's the thing with plagiarism. Plagiarism is when you copy someone else's words or sources with, with, without the permission of the uh, author or something like that. That's what plagiarism is. And plagiarism also counts as cheating, correct? That is correct. However, if you're writing an academic paper and you have borrowed information from another author and you use it in an academic paper that you have authored and you do not give that person credit, even if it's accidental, that is considered plagiarism. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay, sir. Yes, that makes sense. It does. Thank you, okay. sir. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions from any other students?
Now, uh, let's see here. Let me stop sharing because I want to, the last thing I want to do tonight is to, before I let you go, is to show you how do you know, how are you supposed to know what your paper is supposed to look like, okay? In other words, Mr. Davis, I'm trying to do this MLA thing, but I don't understand how my MLA paper is supposed to be formatted, okay? Now, let me remind those of you who have forgotten. There are two documents, are two documents in this course materials folder. When you open it up, one of them is called a sample MLA paper. The other one is called a sample works cited paper or works cited page. Okay. Let me draw your attention to the sample works cited page. Open it up. Now, works cited from this point on, essay number two, three, and four. Every one of your essays for two, three, and four must have this page at the end of your essay. The very last page of your essay must have a works cited page, okay? Because this works cited page is gonna let me know what sources you discovered in your research process. You found information within those sources that you are going to use in your paper, okay? So, for example, essay number two requires two sources. So when I download your essay number two and I look at your works cited page, I need to see two sources listed, okay? Two sources on the works cited page. Now, where you use the information from those sources in your paper, in the body of your paper, that's totally up to you. Depends on what you're trying to say. As long as you use the technique that I just showed you in that Word document, okay, to highlight what your words are versus what your borrowed source words are, okay, then you're good to go, all right? And you highlight that using the par parenthetical documentation, the parentheses with the author's last name and the page number that you got that information from that you're sourcing, all right? So, Again, let me say this one more time because I'm going to get several students who turn in papers and they like, well, I never, I didn't know it was supposed to have this. It happens every semester of every year. You say it one more time. Essay number two, three, and four must have a works cited page. If it does not have a works cited page, that is an automatic letter grade. Okay. What you must kind have of automatic letter grade, sir. Uh, an F? No. An I? You lose one letter grade from the potential number of points you can get. In other words, if you write an awesome essay that is an A essay and you forget to put the works cited page in that essay, that becomes a B paper. Wow. Yeah. Okay. okay. And the reason why this is so strict is because 101 is an MLA class. We are teaching the principles of essay composition using MLA. That's the whole point of the class. So if you're not, if you're not executing the principles of MLA correctly, then you're going to get penalized for it. Okay. So do not, as long as you have a works cited page on there, you're fine. You're not going to lose a letter grade. You're good to go. All right. So make sure at a minimum you have a works cited page at the end of your document for essay two, three, and four. All right. All right. That's the first one. The second one is a sample MLA paper. Okay. And this, again, this is kind of redundant, but this is what your paper should look like. Your paper should have a last name and page number in the top right hand corner, followed by what we call the MLA header. Your name, my name, the course information, and the date. Preferably the date you're assigned due, because that is a reminder to you when you need to turn it in. Okay. MLA header, your name, my name, course information, and the date, followed by a title of your essay. Please put a title to your essay. 
A lot of students forget that. Put a title there. Let me know what your essay is about. You put a lot of time and energy into writing this essay. Give it a title. Give it a name. Okay? Just like your mom and dad. Like my mom and dad. They, they put a lot of effort into making me, and it took nine months for me to come here. If they hadn't given me a name, what would have been the point? Okay? I would have been walking around nameless. Same thing for your essay. You put a lot of time and attention into creating this thing. Give it a name. Give it a title. Okay? Now, this document is a great template for you to read through and study to see the techniques that I was talking about a while ago, okay? Namely, all right, so in this, the, in this essay, this is talking about how farming handbooks have changed since the 19th century. It has a lot of exposition in the beginning. Now, this is a formal academic paper. It's probably a thesis. So, there's a lot of exposition. This is a lot of information coming from the author at the beginning of the paper. It's probably not the best example, but it's the one we're working with. If you scroll through to page two, you will see that she has a subtopic here called population Techno technological changes. She makes a statement here. One of the biggest changes as seen in the 19th century American census reports is the dramatic increase in population. That comes from the author. Okay, she is setting up the topic, so that's those are her words. All right, now immediately there's a shift there because she says the 1820 census reported that over 10 million people were living in America. All right, see, here we have an issue because we know this author is alive today because she just wrote the paper, she clearly wasn't alive in 1820, so that is an indication to the reader that. Hey, I've got information that's following here that's coming from a different source. It didn't come from me. This is coming from the research that I performed to gather this information. And as you read through the data, you can see she uses an, uh, a parenthetical documentation here, what we call a citation, to indicate to the reader that all of the information that come previous to that comes from this source, which is Dan Hoff. Okay on page five of whatever document she sourced, okay? All of this information up here that I'm highlighting came, did not come from the author. It came from research that she read and identified as necessary for her paper, okay? So that information there may be written in her words, but those are not her ideas. Therefore, that belongs to someone else. Hence the reason why we have a in-text citation immediately following it to indicate to the reader that that information belongs to someone else, okay? To whom does it belong? Well, that's why I said you need a work cited page. The last page of the document is gonna answer that. You scroll all the way to the bottom, to the very last page of the document, Right here, she's got a whole list of works cited. Now, she, she wrote a hell of a thesis here. She's got a ton of sources. But the sources are they're grouped alphabetically. So you can go to the D and see right here, Dan Hoff. Okay, there's her source. That's what she used on page two. Clarence H. Dan Hoff wrote a book called Change in Agriculture in the Northern United States right here see 1820 to 1870 that lines up because she references a census that was conducted in 1820 so that lines up it was printed by the harvard up back in 1969 okay so she's covered her tracks there she's given you the source that gave her the information utilized on page two and three in this section right here Okay. It came from that source listed on work cited page. Okay. And she's telling you the page number that, it, that she got that information from. Okay. Now, as you peruse through the paper, you're going to see that she uses more information from Dan Hoff. But immediately following that, she's got information coming from a different source from Mr. Hurt. Okay. Now, again, this data right here comes from Mr. Hurt, but it's, it's, 
related to the information that she just gave. All right. So just because you have two sources doesn't mean that they're the information that you've gathered isn't related somehow. All right. That's why we do the organizing and categor categorizing of our sources so that we can group similar sources together in subtopics. Okay. So she had a couple of sources here that she grouped in a subtopic, probably called population and technology changes. And each of these authors gave her information about that subtopic that she utilized in her paper. And in return, she gave them credit for the information that she did use. Okay. That easy and that simple. All right. It's not a complex process. So as you're writing the paper, if you know that the words that you're about to write or have written are not coming from you, but came from one of the sources that you read to prepare for this paper, you better put us in text citation in there immediately to give you a placeholder to let you a reminder that, hey, I need to give credit to someone else for giving me this information. I didn't discover it. I didn't observe it. I didn't measure it. It came from a book that I read written by an author and I need to give that author credit. Okay. Now, let me pause right here. Any questions? You pause for your questions. Where is my... I can't even see people. There we go. All right, any questions? If you understood that, give me a thumbs up. Good. I've got people in here that have written MLA papers before. This is great. I apologize to you for beating a dead horse, for preaching to the choir, for boring you to tears. However, I have to teach this material and I have to make sure that everybody is, is up to speed and aware of what we're trying to do. Okay. So I'm going to end. Let me stop sharing my screen. I'm going to move this out of the way. <sighs> Y'all, I hate Zoom. It is absolutely horrible. Here we go. All right. So <clears throat> again, let me remind you, because you got a couple, yeah, I think you got a couple of weeks to prepare for this assignment. It's not due until the 18th. So yeah, you've got about a week and three days to prepare for the assignment and write it. Again, not complex. I'm not looking for a dissertation, not looking for a thesis. Just be brief and concise and you'll, you'll be fine. Download those two MLA documents, the MLA works cited page and the sample MLA paper. Please, let me say it one more time, download them and print them out and put them on your desk to serve as a reminder of what your paper needs to look like. Okay. And again, if you're, as you're composing the essay, if they're your observations, no citation is necessary. Okay. You don't have to cite yourself. You are the author. So you're presenting the material. If you're writing words or paraphrasing words that come from another source. And again, you have to write it in your own words. You can't copy it verbatim. You have to write it in your own words you know that information and that data did not come from your own observations, make sure you give credit to another author for using their information. And please, I'm gonna cross myself and say, for, for God's sakes, please do not submit an essay without a word work cited page, okay? Please don't do that. Make sure at the very least that your essay has a work cited page showing me the sources that you researched to use in this paper. Okay. All right. So right there, I'm going to shut up. I'm going to ask everybody in the class one last time. Do you have any questions or concerns that I, for me at this point, 
about this essay and what I'm looking for? No, sir. Do you have any questions about the MLA process and how we use the MLA process to show, to write an essay to show not only our own thoughts and opinions, but the thoughts and opinions of people that we've researched? Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let everybody go tonight because I don't want to introduce another topic uh, and I don't wanna get too far ahead of the high school students who uh, beyond their own control had a football game they had to support tonight. So I'm gonna stop right here. Uh, for those of you who need these recordings, uh, I am going to do my best to download them for the past three weeks. Ms. Baldwin, I know you were asking for this too. I'm going to do my best to download them this weekend, past three weeks worth of material, and post it on YouTube. That's going to take a lot of bandwidth, but um, I'll do my best to get as many of those posted as I can. And then once I have the links in YouTube, I will post them back, uh, post those links inside of Blackboard for you, okay? And then you can stream and download. I, I found you. Say that I found you on YouTube. Oh, I you did find you me on, on YouTube, YouTube. So, <laughs> yeah, I did. You think I'm funny looking here? Wait till you see me on YouTube. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will post those links as soon as I get them, and I will also post the link to the MLA quiz as soon as I get it posted. But again, you have till the end of the semester to do to complete quizzes. Those, those are not. Those are not. Um, at the top of the priority list, okay? All right, if there are no other questions, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. We dodged a major bullet with this hurricane. Unfortunately, our friends out in southwestern Louisiana uh, who got hit by Hurricane Laura, they're getting hit again tomorrow night. And whatever Hurricane Laura didn't take this next one and will probably wipe out. So. Uh, for those of you who are have, have a faith-based background, uh, keep those people in your thoughts and prayers. And, um, you know, if you're able to contribute anything to help those people out, let me tell you, y'all, they're going to need it. Uh, I can't imagine getting hit by two major hurricanes within uh, a few weeks of each other. That's just absolutely heartbreaking. So, um, you know, and then breathe a little sigh of relief that we dodged another one. Okay. So enjoy the weekend. If you have any questions between now and next week, again, please send me your questions via email and I'll do my best to help you. If not, you all are free to go and I'll see you all next week. Have a good night. Y'all too. Good night, sir. Have a good, good weekend. Night. See you again next you week. Too. Thursday, sir. Yes, sir. You too.